Hey gearheads and welcome to Garage Talk. I'm Corey and that is the sexy Honda Civic. That is the 2024 Acura Integra Type S. The Type R equivalent in Acura's lineup. And in this video, I'm gonna take you on a quick tour and then we're gonna take it for a drive. Stay tuned. Gearheads, before we get too far into this one, I do want to thank Acura for delivering this Integra Type S to us for a full week's worth of testing here on the channel. I, this thing has been an absolute blast. Not only will you get this review where we talk more specs and driving performance nature, uh, but you'll get a full family review with Tucker in the back installing his child safety seat and all that fun stuff later this week. But since I've got the hood propped open with the prop rod, let's talk about what motivates uh, this um, Integra Type S. So I did mention the Honda Civic in the intro. This is Acura's version of the Civic. It is a much sexier version, if you ask me. We'll get more into the style here in a little bit, but it does borrow the two liter VTEC inline turbo four from the Civic Type R, where most Integras get the 1.5 liter. This gets the two liter from the Type R and it makes more power than that Civic Type R at 320 horsepower, which gives it a class leading power to weight ratio of 10.1 pounds per horsepower. It only gets 310 pound feet of torque. And I say only because there's no power bump over the Civic variant. And it puts all that power down to the front wheels through a six speed manual gearbox with rev match. And we get several different drive modes from individual, comfort, sport, and sport plus. And we'll talk about this more when driving it, but uh, it has a really good helical style limited slip diff up front that helps put that power down and kind of mask the fact that this is a front wheel drive car when some of the competition has gone to all wheel drive. So all around a very impressive engine. And while we've got the uh, hood popped on this one, I do want to talk about uh, this right here, you can actually see daylight through this. So this is actually a functional heat extractor on the hood. No gimmicks here, nothing just tacked on for looks that actually does help all the hot air get out of here. And while I really love this metallic blue paint on this one, can we talk about this satin finish of it underneath the hood here? I would really love to see a satin coat on this entire vehicle. How much better would that look? in a satin blue versus this gloss blue. I don't know, personal preference here, but that's just me. Closing the hood of the Integra Type S, we can truly appreciate the style of this vehicle. I think it looks absolutely amazing. Acura has really leaned into the angular design where the Civic, especially in its current iteration, has gone softer, more subtle. Acura has leaned into its angular design language here on the Integra and it absolutely shows. I really love it in this blue paint as well. Coming down, we can appreciate the very unique uh, Type S front fascia. In fact, everything in front of the A-pillars is unique to the Type S model from this larger grille, the larger inlets down on the corners and that intercooler up front. All of that is unique the Type S, and we already talked about the heat extractor on the top of the hood, uh, letting that hot air out. The front fenders are also unique uh, to the Type S. We get LED lighting up front from these uh, LED turn signals to the chicane style running lights up front here. I really like that. And while there is a lot of plastic up here, you can actually see there is daylight peeking through there. So these actually do funnel air around the front of the vehicle. So I appreciate that a whole lot. A very unique look here. This is wider than most Integras. Uh, I do believe it's 2.8 inches wider and nowhere is that more evident than in the wheel arches, especially back in the back. This has got a wider, wider track in front and rear. I believe it's just over three inches wider up front and just under two inches wider in the back. So to that end with these 19 inch uh, tires, we, we've got some flared arches here on the front and back just to make sure they are completely covered. 
Our tester does have the optional copper or uh, bronze wheels that I absolutely love with this blue paint. And they are wrapped in 19 inch uh, Michelin Pilot Sport 4S summer tires. They are so good. This is perhaps the best consumer sport tire on the market. They are so very sticky and I truly appreciate it. If you're wondering the measurements on these, they are 265, 30, or 19s uh, on this um, Integra Type S. And then we get, I do believe those are 13.8 inch, two piece rotors up front being squeezed by those red Brembo four piston front brake calipers up front. Really like that. And in addition to the wider front fenders up here, we do get the Type S badge on the fender to let everyone know. So everything from the A pillar forward is completely unique to the Type S model. And then as we come back, you can just also appreciate the fastback nature of this vehicle. So people of a certain age, my age, will remember these from their high school years or their college years. Uh, the Integra being a two-door uh, fun hatchback here, it has grown up uh, as we all have with the modern times. And while yes, I'm disappointed that you can't get a two-door lift back and that it has four doors, it actually translates to be very usable for my family. Again, we have a full family review coming up where we install Tucker's child safety seat in the back. But I really love the design and the proportions of this uh, five door officially. Uh, that sport back absolutely gives it a sleek look. And as I've been saying, I'd say this looks even better than the Civic Type R on which it's based. It, the overall proportions just translate better and all the angular design lines on this. Like look right here, we've got this design line coming off the front fender running all the way up to the back window and then kicking up and following the back window. I mean, this thing absolutely looks amazing from every single angle. All right, one thing I will call out, perhaps my only, I'll borrow a phrase from my good friend Joe Rady, zonk with the design style of this vehicle is with the increased width on the wheel arches back here in the back, you get this odd little piece here on the door that just feels completely tacked on. In fact, this piece right here is also tacked on uh, to uh, the body panel right here. This is the only integrated piece in the rear bumper here. So that wider wheel arch does come at a little bit of a sacrifice here on the exterior styling. But uh, if you can overlook the fact that it is just stuck on plastic bits to complete the look, I'd say overall it's not that bad. But yes, definitely a zonk to borrow a phrase. Moving back here to the back, the three quarter angle is perhaps one of my favorite, especially when we get back here and see the triple exit center exhaust. You get a repeat of those chicane style lights uh, back here in the back with the running lights in the back, LED lights all the way around back here as well from the turn signals to the running lights to the brake lights, a very clean look. You also get the type S badge uh, there on the uh, lift back. And ours has the optional carbon fiber spoiler back here on the back. I really like that as well. Coming down around that triple exit center exhaust, we've got rear diffusers uh, that are unique to the type S model. In fact, this whole rear fascia is unique to the type S model. And let's just talk about that exhaust. Some love it, some hate it, some think it's a little hokey, but my goodness, does it sound amazing. Sport mode. Sport plus. Moving up to the lift back, we do get a power release back here and a very wide opening rear hatch. This makes it a completely usable and practical vehicle. And it's actually quite deep and very spacious. At just over 25 cubic feet, there's more room back here than behind the third row of a Chevy Tahoe, which is saying something to be sure. I will note ours has the flexible uh, fabric shade here, but it does kind of rattle a bit 
uh, when you're on the road. That is my least favorite thing about uh, this particular uh, feature here. I I'm sure there are better ways that it could have been done. I'm sure I could probably uh, put some material on it to keep it from rattling back here. You can see we do have a 60-40 split bench rear seat. It is only a two-person rear seat, which is why we only have top tethers on the two outboard spots. I do talk about we installed Tucker's Child Safety Seat in our family review, but I just want to give you a look at what it does uh, to those fixed in place rear headrests. This one does get the ELS Studio 3D sound system, even though Acura just announced their partnership with Bang & Olufsen for all their future models. So we'll see when that B&O sound system makes its way here into the, <laughs> in, into the Integra. Sorry, got a bug flying into my mouth. And then the lift back just closes very easily with the pull of the handle. All right, before we get in this one to drive it, I do want to show you the Acura key. It is a proximity key and it does say type S on it. We do get that red line there on the side. Typical key here, we've got lock, unlock, hatch release, and your uh, panic button, as well as a release for a physical key here. But as I said, it is a proximity key, so I can just keep it in my pocket or you can keep it in your purse, however you keep your keys on your person, because you can lock from right there unlock by putting your hand on the back of the door handle here. It does not get repeated on the back door, so if you need to load a kid in the back, you're gonna need to come unlock it up front first. Looking inside, we do have the orchid interior, so I contrasting kind of cream colored with black ultra suede here on the front seats, and a very unique, uh, interesting use of materials and textures in here. I will go ahead and start on the uh, driver's door here. We do have uh, your power windows, your lock and lock, your uh, window lockout, automatic up down on the front, but not on the rear windows back here. And then just again, a nice use of colors, materials, and textures. We do get a padded armrest here and a varying degree of uh, materials and colors. So it's not just a black door panel. Coming around to the seats, they do have type S embossed here on the headrest. This is ultra suede here in the middle, and they are a sportier seat than other Integra models. And I really like the stitching here going down the bolsters. They hold you in place very nicely, and that ultra suede does do a nice job of keeping you in place. You can see we have multiple different positions here with lumbar, so that is very nice. But we're going to go ahead and pop in here, get away from all the summer bug noises, close the door. foot on the brake and the clutch. We're gonna push that power engine start button, let her fire up. And you can see we have a full digital gauge cluster here. Everything does a nice sweep up front. I'm gonna turn the air on just a bit because it is already warm outside and it is 10.30 in the morning, but you can see we've got a tack on the left, a speedometer on the right. That does go up to 200 miles per hour, though I have not seen those speeds <laughs> in my time with this one. I will call out that uh, on the tack, the numbers get a little bit bigger as the needle swipes over them. So I think that is really cool. And this vehicle sounds amazing. So I will note it is currently in sport. This uh, does have sport, comfort, individual, and sport plus drive modes it will never default to Sport Plus. You're always gonna have to go in here and put it in Sport Plus, which you can see changes the gauges. You also get this cool little uh, visual up there on the infotainment screen, but that uh, changes uh, the sound of the exhaust to be the best version of this with all the pops and crackles. Let's just give it a listen. Yeah, that, that is the best sounding one. Uh, you can also do an individual mode, which as you go in here, you can customize. You can see the engine, steering, suspension, and gauges are all uh, things that you can customize with individual. I will say that whoever had this before that programmed it this way, uh, I appreciate it. So uh, this gives you that great sounding exhaust note without the harsher ride for day-to-day -day driving. And then when you want to do something a little bit sportier, go to Sport Plus. So full digital gauge cluster here. It is taken straight from the Honda Civic, which is not a bad thing, but 
it does remind you that this is a Honda Civic. In fact, the entire interior in here reminds you that it is a Honda Civic. Same steering wheel, essentially. <laughs> Same interior, essentially. Uh, the honeycomb pattern does not go across the entire grill, but it does feel very Honda Civic in here, which can either be a really good thing or a really bad thing. The Civic is very upscale now, and uh, I will say here in this Integra, it is a completely satisfying interior to experience from just the clicks of all of the controls in here to the sound of turning any dials in this. It is absolutely just a satisfying, well-built interior uh, that really does not disappoint. I will note though, we do have heated front seats, no ventilated seats. So that is something that I wish we did have here uh, in the Integra uh, versus the Honda Civic. Though, I'm very pleased with this vehicle overall. Not only do we get a digital gauge cluster here, but we get a 5.3, I believe, inch head up display that has a few different modes of what you can customize on it when you're still, because when you're in motion, you can't change what's on here. Uh, but otherwise, it gives you the pertinent information that you need right there in front of you. We do get wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto in this one on this nine inch screen. I like it, you get a volume knob, home and back button. It all works very well. Otherwise, it feels very familiar to any Honda or Acura product you've been in lately. Really like it, works very well, and is very quick and snappy to use. We do get dual zone automatic climate control up front here. I already mentioned heated seats. We get USB-A inputs here for wired interface with the infotainment or a USB-C for power. You also get a cigarette style 12 volt, 180 watt uh, charger here. We get a Qi wireless charger with a power button up front here. It takes up the entire space because it is in the center. Perhaps why Acura gives you a power button on it. Not my favorite placement, and if you drive this vehicle as intended, your phone is going to very quickly flop off of the intended charging placement of this. So, not my favorite, just doesn't work. We've been using the USB-C to keep our phones charged in this one. There's your drive mode select, your electronic parking brake, not my favorite, you have to have your foot on the clutch and the brake to turn that off. Once you get used to it though, I, I guess it would be something uh, that would not be an issue, although I, I just want a good old fashioned handbrake in this one. This would be a very good vehicle to learn to drive stick in because not only does it have one of the best six speeds that I've ever sampled, but it has an auto hold function. So if you're worried about rolling back, you can just push that button right there and you won't roll back uh, when you take your foot off the brake. But six speed manual, this thing is absolutely fantastic. You can get an optional titanium uh, gear selector or knob here, but this thing is absolutely fantastic. It does have built in rev match and we'll talk more about that when we're driving but one of if not the best that i've sampled here in this one we've already talked about the seats no sunroof in this one so here at 510 i've got plenty of headroom i've got no problem up front here seats are nice and supportive but let's pop back into the back and see what that back seat is like all right getting into the back seat here the increased length of this vehicle means this has one of the best back seats in the segment coming in and sitting behind myself at 510 you can see I've got tons of legroom behind myself. There is a little bit of a cutout on the back of the front seat here. So even if this seat were further back, I'd still have a good amount of room underneath this uh, padded section up here. No map pocket on the back of the driver's seat, but we do have a map pocket here on the passenger seat. No air vents or anything on the back of the center console and no fold down the center armrest. This is a two plus two. So here in the center where you would normally just have a seat, you get two cup holders, integrated hard plastic here. So no pretense that uh, you're going to try and put somebody in this very narrow center seat here. And then we have this large center tunnel here in the middle anyway. So riding in the center would be a little bit of an awkward experience anyway, having to put your legs on either side of that. But otherwise, very nice back here. We still get padded armrests and uh, window controls, but not a whole lot else going on back here. The uh, sloping roof line of 
Uh, this vehicle does come into play just a little bit here. So again, I'm 5'10", and yes, I'm bumping my head. So I do have to scooch down just a little uh, to put my head on the headrest and not hit my head on the sloping roof line. So if you're taller than 5'10", uh, this back seat might be a little bit of a problem, especially if you have a taller torso. But um, you can get fairly comfortable back here. Like I said, there's plenty of legroom. So this would be my riding position at 5'10", just a little scooted forward and very comfortable overall. But that's enough of the interior comfort of this thing. Let's see how it actually drives. Getting in, firing it up. It's good. I'm going to go ahead and turn that down and put it into sport plus mode because I just love the sound of that exhaust. Slide it over into first and let's go. Now, I will say I drive a competing size class vehicle daily in my six speed manual Chevy Cruze, but it is a decade old and in an entirely different league from this vehicle. This is absolutely a different class altogether. So it feels familiar in size and having three pedals, but that's about it. Let's see what this thing can do. When we set off, it revs to 7,000 RPM and will absolutely, 60, absolutely scoot down the road. This thing is very fast and very fun to drive. And I mentioned how good this six speed manual is. Perhaps one of my favorite things about it. You did hear a little bit of wheel spin up front. That helical limited slip diff up front does do a good job of helping put the power down and masking some of the side effects of this being a front wheel drive platform. I will go ahead and mention that uh, the last time I drove the Civic Type R was on a track I've yet to get one for a week's worth of living with it, but it is the budget-friendly version of this car. And uh, the one we tested was 44,000 and some change. This Acura Integra Type S is 55,000 and some change. So 11 grand premium for five more horsepower and slower overall zero to 60 times and everything uh, when it comes to overall performance because with Acura, you're paying a little bit more for the overall environment. This is a nicer interior. It is a nicer vehicle overall. It just feels more premium and comes across more premium. So Motor Trend tested the uh, zero to 60 time of this and that Honda Civic Type R Civic did it in 5.4 seconds. This did it in 5.7. So even with that five additional horsepower and the class leading 10.1 pounds per horsepower uh, power to weight ratio in this one, it is a little bit slower than the Honda Civic on which it's based. But in my experience living with it for a week, it has been an absolute blast to drive. I'm here on my favorite curvy back roads in East Texas, and I have absolutely loved driving this thing around. It makes for a great commuter, great daily driver, and a great vehicle just to go out and have some fun in. While we have this, we also have the automatic version of the 2023 Nissan Z, which makes over 100 horsepower more and is right around the same price as this vehicle. Granted, I do have a five-year-old son, so my life situation is a little bit different than someone who might be shopping the two, but at 53,000 versus this vehicle's 55,000, I would probably pick this over the Z. It just feels like a better all-around car, more buttoned down, more polished, more just the complete package versus that Z. Don't get me wrong, that Z is fun. This thing just feels like something I would like to live with a little bit better, a little bit more, especially with the versatility of having even a two-person back seat in this one. Coming to the driving dynamics of this one, those Pilot Sport 4S summer tires, those Brumbo brakes, the six-speed uh, manual transmission, 320 horsepower, everything translates to an absolutely phenomenal driving experience. I mentioned when we were on the track in that Civic that it was a fantastic vehicle. And 
In addition to that Civic, we also tested its competitor from Toyota in the GR Corolla. We did have that one for a week here on the channel and I loved it. This thing beats that because it's more practical day in and day out with a larger rear hatch compartment, more power, and just a better overall experience when you get into the vehicle. Even though this one is front wheel drive where that GR Corolla was all wheel drive, the driving character and experience in this one, especially with those Pilot Sport 4S tires, is absolutely immaculate. And this six speed is, like I said, one of the best, if not the best, I've ever sampled here on the channel. And then the sound of that triple exit exhaust back behind me is absolutely amazing. It has me driving in Sport Plus mode everywhere I go or at least turning it to that individual mode with the engine in Sport Plus so I can hear all the pops and crackles do the, that active exhaust valve back there in the back. All of this translates into a package that I would absolutely buy, though 55,000 just seems a little bit steep for me, especially when the Honda Civic Type R is 44,000. So you're paying an 11 grand premium for a decidedly premium vehicle, but uh, it's just a big pill to swallow, making me wonder if I would rather have this or the Honda Civic. This is definitely the more grown up of the two, that Civic Type R with its red seats, red seat belts, and red carpet up front definitely screams performance vehicle, where this takes a more subtle, understated approach on the interior and goes more loud and bombastic outside with its exterior design. This really is the better looking of the two as well, in my opinion, and doesn't have that big boy racer style wing on the back either. So it really comes down to preference and budget whether you would take this or the Honda Civic Type R on which it's based. Both are gonna be hard to find because in today's market, uh, performance vehicles are going at quite a premium and that's just the nature of the beast here in 2023, I guess. Sad to say, but it's true. Although I would say I, I'm drawn a little bit more to the Acura version than I am the Honda until it comes down to price. Whether it, or not it is worth that 11 grand premium to you, well, that's up for you to decide. But uh, now that we're getting back out to some straight pavement, we're gonna do one more quick uh, zero to 60 run, see exactly what this thing is like once more because I, whew, I absolutely love this thing. So, complete stop, first gear, rev it a little, drop the clutch. Oh, traction control, but oh my goodness, that thing revs, and you can see the bright red flashing light there in front of me in the gauge cluster. This thing rips and pulls all the way to the 7,000 RPM red line. It's a lot of fun. I would absolutely have one of these. Puts a big smile on my face. If you want to see more from us here at the channel, find us on all social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, YouTube, Threads, all at GT Garage Talk, or you can go to gtgaragetalk.com where you can read more about this vehicle, things I couldn't remember off the top of my head while carving corners in this very fun performance five door. Feel free to give us a like, comment, subscribe, ring the bell, all the things to help the algorithm know to show you more content from us. But as for me, behind the wheel of one of the most fun five-door vehicles I've tested lately. Until next time, gearheads. Bye.